Okay, here we go. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the F Word Podcast here for another week here. I said here twice. Uh, wherever you're listening from, I hope you're having an awesome day. Uh, I am G, your host, and with me, it's just Vass. What's up? We're having a tough time trying to get everybody together. Yeah, it's Anthony so lost his job, but apparently he's had a crazy week that uh, has enabled it's finals him to week. Come. Oh, finals week. It's a big deal then. Very finals. I hate finals. Mm. You know, I never showed up for my university finals. Yeah, I remember you told me that. Yeah. Next time, a little word of advice for anybody that's deciding to go to university: don't take on two jobs or three while going to university not the best idea mm. in the world i crashed real hard what's going on man nothing it's been an interesting week a lot of rain so dude like, but the week's gone gone by really quick and yet it's now kind of slowed down because of the rains and work gets a little bit longer because you know construction doesn't happen when it's a down, torrential downpour yeah i don't know where everybody else is living i hope wherever you're living you're having good weather we've had a real big drought so i felt like fucking andy dufresne hmm. out of the sewers just hands in the air as the rains were coming down or spartacus style yeah that's true after he killed the bringer of rain if yeah. you will yeah. so it's nice to actually finally get some rain legit rain what's blake doing blake what's up man What's he saying? What's he love, saying? Love rain. You know what they say. I don't know what they say. I don't know what they say either. But uh, yeah, the rain is good. We needed it. We needed it real, real bad. Um, yeah. So wherever you're listening from, I hope you're having some good weather. I hope you have, guys are having a good time. Um, and I hope you remember that you're awesome and not just because you're listening to us right now. You just are. You just are. I've been trying to do this positive thinking thing. How's that going for you? Um, one guy I was listening to was describing it as he was he wasn't describing the positivity thing he was describing seeing things uh seeing the good and the bad things right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and he used an example of someone a friend of theirs coming over and taking like a hundred photos and then sending them like a hundred photos and stuff and at first he was like you know i had i i was looking at him like why the hell is she sending us a hundred photos and then he's like then i had to train myself to think oh that's great i've got a hundred photos to choose from i can pick the ones that i like and then disregard the other ones. Well, yeah. But he's uh, he was talking about how like at first it does feel weird, and you do have to fake it. Like he was in in a word in a phrase, it was like a fake it till you make it kind of thing. Yeah, sounds about right. Especially if you're making that transition to a little bit more from pet, not full on pessimism, but just a little bit more bleak. I guess you can say. Is oh, dude, softer. I'm a full pessimist. You well, whatever. Right? Let's say po- pessimist to complete positivity or at least the borderline depending on the situations right yeah and it, it all comes down to circumstances right so well and and how said circumstances are handled yeah because uh yeah most of the time most of the time i'd be i'm, I'm very 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 much a pessimist mm-hmm. and then now it's like it feels weird though because i feel like i'm faking it so i feel like i'm being disingenuous genuous but i think the way that he was saying it is you just kind of keep going at it until it actually just becomes a natural thing that you yeah. do. So I'm not even, I don't even think I'm close to that natural part yet. No, but, it'll take some time. But, but for the most part, it's like, you know, little bits here, little bits there. So Every little bit helps. Yeah, man. Have you always been, a, you've, you've been kind of in the middle ground. I pick my battles. <laughs> if you want to, like positive, I usually try to stay on the positive side of things and then I just, I feel. Yeah, I, I'm a believer in karma. So if you get in a situation where like it's really shit, I'm like, well, I think it'll take care of itself somehow, or I just like I don't let it bother me as much because karma will take care of it. Or yeah, if you're talking another. about certain instances, for sure. Yeah, I think but, um, I think it was Nietzsche that was saying, uh, be careful to not become the evil that you're fighting or yeah. something, something along those lines. And then you and I talked about like similar things like that. It's like yeah. you start something off for the good, but then the longer you keep going at it, like. Mm-hmm the worse it, it you could become the very thing that you were combating against absolutely and okay. everyone goes in with good intentions no matter you know what you're looking at it they all were so they all start <laughs> always man you just it's just tough to catch it right? yeah 
All right. Uh, okay, we got a lot of we got a lot of shit. A lot of shit this a week. A lot. Some of it's probably gonna be pretty quick, but oh yeah, for gonna... sure it is. For sure it is. Uh, um, go ahead. Go with your list. We, well, we talked about the E three stuff last week, and yep. the developers for the Marvel game pretty much said we're not changing our design, which good yeah. for them. Yeah, um, I would say like my that was my only stipulation. I think a lot of people are on the same front. It would be nice to see the motion cap of the actors that we know, and that's just pretty much it. Is That'd be way th- too expensive, though. I, I understand the expense behind it, but like for us, our visual is always you know Chris Hemsworth as Thor. So to see a slightly different variation of it, it's just like something's off. But it'll still be a fun game no matter what. I think it's just anything to be able to play those characters in that way. I think it'll be fun no matter what. Does the idea of them looking, you know, like their comic counterparts or Ultimate Alliance counterparts or any other games or stuff that we've seen them in, does that do anything for you? Um, no, I'm I'm pretty ingrained on the MCU side of stuff. So as long as they look like their MCU, let's say their costume and that look, mm-hmm. I'm game. Everything else is kind of whatever. It'll look a little off. And even for now, because like I feel like I'm ruined for it. I'm like, I only know MCU. I've never delved into the comics. I know the classic, like, X-Men is probably the only thing cartoon-wise I watched in the past and Spider-Man. So good. Spider-Man's costume is really, it's universal for the most part. Like, minus Well, a he's few. got a mask. It's easy. Well, and the thing is, the, you still have the black webbing everywhere, True. red and blue. Sure. That you don't need to change much of that. And if you change the colors, color scheme, it's not going to change. But there's a few iconic characters that you can't really stray too far away from their iconic look. I think. Um, yeah, it's it's hard because the comics, like, for instance, someone had posted a photo on Instagram. They were putting the the first Avenger, Captain America yeah. outfit. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, even, yeah. Like, even just the first Avengers comic. Yeah. And um, they had the MCU one. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you know, the caption underneath was, it's really not always great to have comic accurate outfits because mm-hmm. in Captain America's case, he did not look like he fit. Yeah. Even when you look at the Avengers now, he's the one that stands out like a sore thumb. He's just this like light blue type of thing. Mm-hmm. They made fun of it in Endgame, which I thought was really funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it looked off for sure. So I don't mind that stuff. I know, like with Thor, let's say after playing God of War, where Thor's a dick, and a yeah. lot of the history of it. If you look, depending on which which history you go into, by who. You know, Thor was a dick. Odin was a dick. They didn't look anything like they do in the MCU, obviously. Yeah. Um, they're not e- not even in temperament or their style. Like, it's just very different. So in God of War, he's this big, fat guy with a big beard and, yeah, and yeah. everything like that. So it's it's different, right? It's almost mm-hmm. like taking Endgame Thor and Odin and mashing them together. Yeah. Um, in the comics, specifically when you go into the Unworthy Thor, where he's got, like, his red hood. Yeah. Um, and he's got this, like, like a battle axe in and of mm-hmm. itself kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't mind that. Also, I know I thought I know we were making fun of the hockey pad things. I believe we were, Anthony myself. Where from Ragnarok? Captain no, Captain oh. America. He had that like he looked like he was wearing pads on top of it. I think it's because of the strap that he wears, it tightened up maybe and the armor was a little bit bulkier. They're talking about no, no, no. game? No, 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 not in game. No, oh, no, the no. Move I'm talking game. about it in the game. We're oh, still talking about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. This is all going back to the developers just being like, We're not gonna do it. Yeah. I think that was now in hindsight more towards hey my captain america could have this armor because of the customization between the characters yeah so i think that plays a lot into it but um yeah um another thing that came out today i saw it on Mm whatculture.com apparently ea is trying to skirt the loot boxes thing by calling them special surprises or something stupid like that they're really just trying to for somehow put a positive spin on it but no it is what it is you guys are just trying it's to gambling yeah that's all it is and and because of the uh well, isn't the, the law passed already no not yet I, mm. I think it's one of them overseas is looking at banning them and so they're they're trying to spin it like oh it's like kinder surprise hey dickheads kinder surprise is banned in the united states for some reason because kids could choke on the candies and stuff yeah. so if you're using that as an example your own country doesn't want them in there so why would you petition them to be these surprise boxes or yeah. whatever you have to pay for them at an exorbitant amount to possibly get something. Yeah. That is a gamble in and of itself. Mm-hmm. So EA is just being fucking dumb. Um, what else we got? What else we got? Disney building a $14 million Marvel land. Mm-hmm. That'll be 
That'd be awesome. Well, it'd be like their Star Wars thing that they did now. But uh, they're probably they're what's probably called Galaxy's Edge. No, I have no idea. Forget. I can't remember the exact name, but uh, basically they're probably waiting for to finish the Star Wars one, mm-hmm. and probably then they would roll out this MCU one. So mm-hmm. you'll probably see mock-ups of like the obviously Avengers Tower, uh, like uh, like depends Avengers. how big they're gonna go with it. Because I mean, it might be right now. It's their biggest franchise. Would you say no? But I'm saying so, like Avengers Tower. Let's say is obviously not going to no, be no, a no, gigantic full, no. Building. I'm just saying like a room will look like yeah. Avengers Tower, or a building will have the top end of the tower. Or they go with the Avengers head, like the headquarters, yeah. like the, yeah. the one that was destroyed in, yeah. in Endgame, and Absolutely. that was in like um, Ultron. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that'll be fun. I think. Did you see that? You sent me that video. The Adam the Savage one. Yeah, Holy Adam Savage. Fucking shit. Why did it take a, a genius from Mythbusters or a special effects guy from Mythbusters, with, which isn't a huge stretch because mm-hmm. he's a special effects guy? Yeah. But of all the people that have all the money in the world, it, like, uh, well, come on, man. Well, they probably just didn't care to look into it. Or, like, at the end of the day, he had the idea and he found the right people to. To get it forward with NASA and stuff like that with well, their that jet one, propulsion and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, because they were already working on it. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah. who's to say they weren't working on it? But the fact that he teamed up with the right people, he's got a pre- credible name and he knows mm-hmm. what he's doing. So, he teamed up with them, did what he did. And it's pretty crazy that it's almost there that they could potentially do it, but not quite. No, yeah, for sure. I mean, that, cause It'd be like a like hover three situation. Re- yeah. Three repulsors and one in the back. But, yeah. man, I... The fact that they're 3D printing titanium is pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. And like awesome. those guys were 100% on board for doing it the way they were doing it. For sure it, so. they would. And they did a really good job. Like it looked great. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was funny though, the the flight pilot or the guy that was piloting it in the suit himself. He's yeah. like, yeah, my shins don't move like that. I don't know. Yeah, that was the <laughs> so one thing that they was noticed really funny. that was kind of really weird that they did that curvature but I think but that's a, but that's in the movie they, yeah. they again that, they, that's it's a weird thing in the movie that mm-hmm. it's like this practically doesn't work yeah. which in reality the whole iron man suit doesn't work anyways if you were yeah. to take physics into account he would have been dead the first time he would have crashed like it's the same thing with cte and football yeah. that 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 um that instant contact that happens on the outside transfers through exponentially towards mm-hmm. into the body or the the vessel yeah. that's or the person or thing that's inside. So, yeah. fuck, he would have been dead on his first run. Yeah, but it's still you know it's 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 fantasy. Yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? But that's awesome. We're getting closer to Iron Man suits, mm-hmm. a fleet of them. Almost. Um, where do I want to go from here? Where do I want to go from here? Mm. Oh, um, the Spider-Man stuff. Uh, it's a comic book, I guess, with JJ yeah. and his yes. son is involved. And then uh, one other illustrator yes. is the one. So it's supposed to be, uh, they're introducing a new villain called Cadaverous mm-hmm. that's going not after, not just after Spidey, but also Mary Jane as well. Yeah. And JJ and his son, I don't know what credentials they have that they would want to be on well, board for, but... JJ's more on the movie and just things and... And but it's not going to be a movie. It's just a no, I understand book. that, but that's where his credibility comes from. Where he come, where he gets into the writing. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. That could be something. Uh, according to the feature from the New York Times, going to cause problems not only for Spider Man and his alter ego Peter. Uh, for now, protected origin. Mm-hmm. Uh, more recently, we began to develop an idea. This is from uh, Henry, a guy named Henry. Mm-hmm. Who's a guy named Henry? Anyways. Uh, developing a new idea and a new different and exciting take on Spider-Man. Um, the guy they pitched it to first, Nick Tad, pressed me to do a book with him. Abram said a year or so ago, I started talking about it with Henry. I think that's his son. Yeah. And it sort of happened organically, and that has been the joy of this. Yeah. Um, you can watch the full announcement. There's a video. I'm looking at this on comicbook.com. Yeah. Uh, so yes, it's not a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. It's just a brand new Spider-Man, and it's just a countdown. So that's always fun. Yeah. Always Apparently fun they're and changing. Always from what I read from that small little article, they're changing a little bit more of like not changing, but yeah. exploring different avenues of Peter Parker's character, Mayor Jane's character, and so on and so forth. So, was it this week that they were announcing the Hunger Games that they're looking at doing another Hunger Games? Yeah, I sent that uh, the little <laughs> clip. They're doing a prequel of the Hunger Games, probably most likely when the whole thing happened, the first rebellion and. Mm-hmm. The forming of the Hunger Games, and I know your thoughts. I actually enjoyed the see the. the I saw a trilogy. What but it, it, was it, it four? Is, it was four movies in total, but technically, it was three because it's oh, part, it part, part one, part two. Yeah, part yeah, two. Yeah, so yeah. call it a trilogy is just for 
not yep. calling it a saga because it's not quite there. Yep, that's fair. <laughs> so I, I actually enjoyed it. It was really well done, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Yes, it's definitely on the teeny uh, teeny bopper scene and more light that way. Mm-hmm. Um, even though it does have some deaths and stuff like that, it's like it's well, there's deaths in all, but it's mediums. the dialogue is definitely on the more teen side, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so that maybe that's why it doesn't get to everybody. But I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I didn't dislike it. I didn't mm-hmm. like it. I'm. It's just exists. Yeah. It, it was just we watched it. There was nothing exciting about it. I felt it was too much. Um, uh, there was, there was almost too much focus on the wrong things and and extended periods of time of focusing on the wrong things, like the whole Katniss with that other guy. What's that other kid's name? Peta. Maybe yeah, Peta, and then the Liam, one that she was Liam Hemsworth, to be, yeah, and then all like there the was just these, triangle, there yeah. was this love triangle going on that I felt like you already have an extremely interesting premise in and of itself. Mm-hmm. It was like um, what was that Michael Bay one? Was it Pearl Harbor? Yeah, Pearl Harbor. Mm-hmm. Pearl Harbor is already an incredible story. Yeah. You don't need a love triangle with Ben Affleck, Josh Hartnett, and Kate Beckinsale. But Pearl Harbor was about the event. Hunger, no, Hunger but, Games but is about, fo- but again, it's about yeah. the event. Yeah, Hunger Games is called the Hunger Games. Pearl yeah. Harbor is called the ha- Pearl Harbor, but the main focus in each of those was this love triangle yeah. that was going on. But it's more fitting in the Hunger Games because you're you're more focused on Katniss and her relations with everybody. So she was forced into that situation with Peta in essence, but it turned out to be more real than what she had with the other with Liam's Liam Hemsworth's with the character. But is that what is important to a, a movie called the Hunger Games? No, but it wasn't a main focus either. Well, it became towards the end because that's how the books were written too. So yeah, I it's, guess I never read the books. Well, I never read the books either, but that's how it followed it for the most part. I think there were obviously as always there's going to be some differences, but definitely. I, I for me it just it wasn't a movie for me. I didn't no, care for it. It fair. was super boring. Mm-hmm. Like I, you're just looking at something like, oh, this is a really cool premise. Too bad it's not very good. Yeah. That so happens a lot, <laughs> but but the prequel aspect of it even though i didn't like the movies Mm. i think it's actually super interesting because when you establish a world Mm -hmm. nothing is cooler than being like oh shit what was the world like what led you to this not the very beginning because we know something an event was uh, was started and all of a sudden that's Mm. where these divides happened yeah but it would be really cool I, i would actually because i've seen the movies i'm more interested in the prospect of how did we get here because mm-hmm. you have you had so many really interesting characters like Woody Harrelson's character like Elizabeth Banks character oh yeah like the people in charge the systems that were in they place. had very A-list celebrities in there yeah. and it was well cast and yeah. yeah well it was a big it's a big book franchise and For it's sure a big it franchise is. in general I would say to that point I felt like everything outside of Katniss um outside of the first like half an hour or so of the first movie mm-hmm. everything outside of Katniss was way more interesting to me yeah. than anything that was going on with Katniss yeah. which is really weird like I, I you just look at these a- extra characters and you're just like oh man there's this like great world that's going on terrible world but a yeah. great world that's built here that they could really focus on so I'm sure. excited for that no it'll be good I am also excited that Todd Phillips's Joker movie is officially rated R Todd Phillips, that's the one with uh, Joaquin. Joaquin. Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, that would be good. Oh man, rated R. Interesting. Perfect. This go. This goes right into my Mean Street slash Taxi Driver vibe I got from that trailer. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be super gory, a lot of f bombs or anything like that. Like, there's a very yeah, fine line. It's hard to say how they rate it R nowadays. Like, it has to have the excessive. Uh, I think it has to have excess any any sex in there, uh, any violence. Yeah, I think the I think that you can have violence, but it's the blood level, like how realistic how it is. So let's like say um, you're a character, I'm a character. You come to slit my throat, mm-hmm. and the camera pans away as soon as you pull the knife out. Clearly, you're going to slit my throat, but they move away from it. Or you, you do it and you don't see any blood. Well, you see the splatter, but you don't see the cut. You don't even see the splatter, let's say. Okay. You just, it, it's just kind of, it just happens, right? Whereas if they showed you doing it, mm-hmm. you see my throat, it's the opening, the blood's coming out, then that would most likely give it an R rating, I think. Mm-hmm. But they're so, it's so weird how they do it because, yeah, just like you, I have no idea. Yeah. But that's exciting. That would be good. Um, I guess we can talk about some of the Batman stuff. There's like seven villains in there. Seven villains are going to be in the, the Batman? Penguin. Cat you know woman. what I saw today is that uh, someone even threw up Macaulay Culkin to be the Joker in that Batman series. 
I could see it. He's be he's an interesting. interesting dude. Yeah. He'll kind of play. Oh, I'm trying to think now who he would relate to as a joke. Actually, I don't want to say it, but he'd also he'd borderline be like how Jesse Eisenberg was Lex Luthor. Which would could which is more feel, of a joker than a Lex Luthor. Yeah. So I don't know how that would work out, but it should be interesting how they go that route. Seven villains though, that's pretty interesting. I, I, I think so, because I saw something on Looper and now I'm on Den of Geek. Um they're so they're basing it off of the long the, the Halloween, like a long night or something. Okay. And so he, the and Rat Reeves has said, I'm diving into the detective stuff. There's shit going down mm-hmm. and he has to figure out who these people are, and all of these villains are going to be shown in there which is there, I'm really excited about. Is it supposed to be that all these villains are working together? Um I think so. So this is um Reeves described his vision as a noir detective story. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And he says, I think there's a chance to do an almost noir driven detective version of Batman that is a point of view driven in a very very powerful way and that is hopefully going to connect you to what's going on inside his head and inside his heart. Um there was another one that said all the the cast, um, 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 Jeremy Irons was set to return as Alfred with Joe Manganiello as villain mm. Deathstroke, but it's safe bet they're not. Um, yeah. Okay, the Penguin, Catwoman, I believe the Riddler. Um, what was the other ones? What was the other ones? Maybe I don't think I heard Mister Freeze. I don't know, they, but there's a few. And I'm excited for it. I should have probably done a little bit more research on this, but mm-hmm. uh, it kind of just popped up the other day, and I'm okay with it. Yeah, I think the big thing is they would be they would be better off to make sure that they don't cast big names for these villains. Yeah, um, probably go less mainstream. Yeah, and, and and only so. Actors. Yeah, like not even be less actors. Even new ones I, off I think, the scene. Yeah, clearly. find some really find talented people. Yeah. That can, because they're only going to have limited screen time. If you have that many villains and you're a noir story driven detective story with two, Batman, a little bit over two hour movie, how much, something like that. How are you going to fit that all in? Yeah, so it's it's all about managing your time, right? Unless and it's so plan to make it a trilogy, maybe. But I think right now a lot of people have learned, especially in DC, don't plan for the next one <laughs> until you got like catch the ball first before you run. See, that's a tough though. Like they, they want to plan for the next one because they have to set it up. If they just do the one off and then they come up with the new one, well then you'll be like, Well, where did this come from? There's no setup, there's no nothing. So other than it'd be like a whole new detective Batman series, like, okay, he dealt with these these villains, okay, they're gonna deal with the next one kind of thing. Um, if he was only to introduce one or two villains in this one and then the next two or three on the next one or whatever and go from there. Well, I mean, um, even uh, I think after the Batman Begins, yeah. no one's been on record as saying like the Joker wasn't originally going to be in the next one. No. But they tease the Joker at the end and I think it was more so to, to build on the world. So there's yeah. a way to tease your movie. Post credit? Oh, no, not even a post credit. I no. mean, just at the end, very similar to Batman Begins, where you can be like, "Oh, this world is bigger," and I would be excited to see it. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't make it like they've spent the whole movie setting it up for that. Like that's what the Mummy fucked up on. Like the Mummy movie with Tom Cruise fucked up on the fact that they were so focused on like we, this needs to be our jump off point, and we have to introduce everything for this new universe that we don't even oh, like. Yeah. And then they screwed the whole thing up. And it ended up just being this thing of let's just put everything in. The first two were the top ones. They're great. They're they're a lot of fun. Yeah. They're really good. Um, <laughs> when I was younger, I liked the second one better for some reason. But yeah. when I'm older, I look at the first one. I'm like, oh, this is way better. Like, yeah, it's in its own good. way. Yeah. But I mean, d- they could have this happen. Yeah. They can have these characters around. Hell, they can even have like a question mark on a building. Mm-hmm. And we know that this is a world where these where the Riddler exists. Yeah. They can have little Easter eggs around yeah. that could build on the world as opposed to actively going out of their way to show us everything. Mm-hmm. And I think that would be much more effective because it will give them it'll give them the room mm-hmm. to make another one if they want. Yeah. Or do a one off and walk away yeah. without there being like, oh, but you tease this and you tease that. Yeah. No, we we just established a world that he's living in. 
Yeah. I don't but, know. That's a, he's got a big vision in mind, and I hope he's able to pull it off the way he envisions it and mm-hmm. will enjoy it just as much. And that's always the tough thing. It's like you have the grandiose idea, mm-hmm. and you just hope that you can execute it correctly to how you wanted it and then how people will respond to it cor- positively. Yeah. Well, I mean, you look at Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Good movie. Not great. Yeah. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Incredible. War of the, for the Planet of the Apes incredible yeah. at least in my opinion yeah. i i like and that is a really really good trilogy it was a good build up and of course yeah. rise had to be very low key very how they did it mm-hmm. is just a build up for and sure it, and it was great because then your expectations going into the next one aren't too overblown and yeah. you're not like oh the first one was amazing but you know and then the second one comes in it's like well it's not as good the first one was just un- enticing enough that when the second one hit and it was as incredible as it was, you're like, yeah. holy fuck. Mm-hmm. Like, this is awesome. Yep. I agree. Um, um, um. Yeah, it's been going pretty good. Yeah. You know, ongoing back. Oh, I think you just jinxed it. Did we're, I? We're looking at it and it's skipping now. The fucking recorder thing. Ongoing battle with the laptop and uh, its recording capabilities. And it's constant buffering. Mm-hmm. Um... Marvel supposedly, I think this was just a rumor though, mm-hmm. but I love rumors. Mm-hmm. Marvel looking at John Krasinski and Emily Blunt for Reed Richards and Sue Storm and Liam Hemsworth as as the, as the Human Torch. Interesting. Uh, I think John Krasinski was already like, not teased, but a fan made put his head or put like the f- yep. the fantastic four there's tons of them yep. i think i don't know if uh emily blunts was on there too but i john krasinski stick out in my mind that that was out there mm-hmm. so him as reed richards could actually be very good to reboot once again the fantastic, fantastic four, four series. under the marvel umbrella but under the marvel it's umbrella, a tough yeah. one honestly i was very i i really like the casting done for the new one that came out previously with like Miles Teller. Yeah, um, it was a good cast. Very good cast. Who's, and then I can't remember the other It was girl. Miles Teller. One it was... Um, Kate Mara. Kate Mara. And it, it Michael was... B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. I forget what the other guy's name was. Ah, Toby remember. Keller was in there. I think it was Toby Keller. He was the guy that played Von Doom, Doom or Von Doom, Doom yeah. or whatever they called him. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I was really excited for the, ca- for the the for the casting and stuff. Oh, this should be really good. And it just fell flat. For sure. Well, and there's so much behind the scenes BS that that's a lot of reasons why it fell flat too. Yep. Because I didn't see it. Yeah. I didn't care to see it. I have seen... I've caught it. Like, I, I remember catching the last bit. It's on TV kind of it thing. It was on TV. I've caught... The middle part I've seen on YouTube clips of when they've turned, like when they turned into the Fantastic mm-hmm. Four. Um, but it just, it just seemed very uninviting. Like it was just very droll and blah. Yeah, I'll put it this way. The thing I thought looked pretty good. Yeah, uh, way better than obviously the, the two thousand one. one. Well, given technology, you, for sure, you give it a pass somewhat. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I don't mind that. I don't know if John Krasinski. It looks like the Reed Richards type. And and yeah. not just his his actual appearance, but maybe because I'm I'm so inundated with the office, like yeah. Emily Blunt exudes intelligence. So her as Sue Storm. So her as Sue Storm, I think it was. They, have you seen John Krasinski in anything else other than, other than The Quiet Place? I, well, he was great in The Quiet Place, but even when you look but at, but you him, need like, a different got, range. You need something else. I could see him as the Human Torch. Yeah, he as opposed that. to Reed Richards, he does have the, the he's tall though. So, so you that's think Liam Hemsworth would be better as... No. He wouldn't no. be anything. I don't think Liam Hemsworth's a good actor, Yeah, unfortunately. Fair. Well, he hasn't had uh, anything to give him that. Well, he had the Hunger Games. Yeah, but nothing major to lead, I don't think. I haven't seen much no. of his stuff to say for sure. To be fair, Chris Hemsworth hasn't had much success outside of the MCU either. No. Like Black Hat fell flat. Yeah. Um, by this, or there was that C one that he yeah. did didn't do very well. He it was really good with that. Um, we talked about it a couple weeks ago the racing Rush. one. Rush it was amazing. He was great in Rush. Yeah. Um, hey, Arturo's in. What's up, man? Uh, we're talking about the Fantastic Four rumors of John Krasinski and Emily Blunt with Liam Hemsworth as the Human Torch. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Arturo? Let me know. Um, yeah, I don't know who would be good at Reed Richards, to be perfectly honest. I That's think the guy one. that played Dr. Manhattan uh, in Watchmen Mr. would have been, or Mr. Manhattan. Doctor? I'm not sure. One of the two. Manhattan, big mm-hmm. blue dick in the the sky. Yeah. Uh, he's got that science look to him. 
He was actually also in the Stanford experiment, and again, he, mm-hmm. he's just got that. He's got a really good look to him that I think he would work really well. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, when it comes to the thing, you mm-hmm. know, it's the thing. As long as they don't do an origin story, we've already seen it. We know what happens. Yeah. We don't need an origin. It's like Spider Man. We don't need to see Uncle Ben die again. Yeah. It's the last time. First and last time. We're good. Well, it's funny how uh, Into the Spider Verse made poked fun at it, and like they did it over and over, but like yeah. super quick. It's like, okay, here we go again. Let's do this, this, this. Yeah. yeah. And slight like different differentiations and stuff like that. So it was really good. Do you want me to? Do you want to like lift that a little closer? No. Nope. <laughs> I like put it back it. for a reason. Oh, it's just when I when I was, was catching you last time, I kept like you were drifting. Mm. You are drifting. What does Arturo say? Uh, I think they might be great, mm-hmm. and with them together in real life, I I feel like it would be bring great like chemistry. So, and that's where I keep thinking. I'm like, it would be great. He's got the height. Yeah. So it works, mm-hmm. and the fact that they're married, like they mm-hmm. would actually legitimately make a really great Sue Storm. And Reed Richards, they would be a great married couple, right? Because yeah. in the in a quiet place, they were wonderful together. Yeah, like they're married in real life. They should have chemistry, mm-hmm. right? It's a no brainer. It's just the look. But again, it, this is just a look. Yeah, they can always you know change things. Yeah. Uh, and again, mm-hmm. Liam Hemsworth as a Human Torch, that'd be fine. Like it wouldn't be terrible. I don't yeah. know. I haven't seen him anything with any comedic chops. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Uh, Mythbusters builds Iron Man suit. We saw that. Calls. What do you? Oh, you're going to. The, oh, okay. It's just me. Oh, you. How much water did you drink? Oh, I'm by myself. It's so quiet here by myself. Yeah, I'll try not to drag this out too much. Um, but yeah, if you're thinking, hey. Who would I cast as the Fantastic Four? You can email us at the Upward Podcast at gmail.com. You can comment in the video below on YouTube if you're listening on YouTube. What's up to the YouTube people? Uh, if you think they're a good mix, who else would you cast in that spot? Uh, in all four positions, I mean, the thing, again, it's more so a voice thing. Sorry for the pun. Than anything else. Um, I wouldn't mind. I'm blank. Every time I try to think of an actor, I always blank on an actor for just anything aside from the Manhattan dude but the thing would have to be really interesting they distort his voice anyways they got away with it with Michael Chiklis because he already had a like a kind of a grizzly voice but you know they can do something different uh, yeah I'm not sure I'm not sure I'm not sure um, also on the other things that we're looking at what would you like Disney to put in their 14 million dollar Marvel land uh, cause I think that would be pretty, pretty sweet. I'll probably never go. I'm not a traveling person. So, um, so that's why, um, 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 yeah, now it's getting really quiet. I don't know what else to talk about. I don't know what everyone's watching. Why am I watching right now? I don't know. Sorry okay. About that, and everyone. we're back. <laughs> Damn. You were gone for a while. I started talking about like. Asking people to comment on who they want as their Fantastic Four people. Then I tried to think of somebody. I'm really terrible on the spot. Like, I'm really, like, even, I keep thinking about my, um, so the wedding we were at last weekend. Yep. We were at a wedding this past weekend. It was awesome. It was a good time. And the groom was smart enough to write his speech down. I didn't write shit down. And it was, a, like, a lot of people thought it was funny. But for me, in my own personal mind, I'm like, I could have done a lot better with it. Mm-hmm. Just, I just got to stop doing things on the spot. Even the last episode I did on TVs, the good, bad, and the empty. Yeah. Which, if you're into TV stuff, you can take a look at that and uh, all, you know, all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I got to write shit down. I got to mm-hmm. start just like writing things out. Mm-hmm. This is way better. What does Arturo say? He's just asking, what have we talked about so far? So we... Oh, Arturo. Quick, quick recap on Yes. So we talked about the Spider-Man 4 thing, which is really just the... It wasn't a Spider-Man 4 thing. It was a countdown with the Spider-Man 4, 3, 2, 1 to the J.J. Abrams uh, with his son comic that they're going to be releasing. We talked about Mythbusters Iron Man suit which is dope as fuck. We talked about the Disney building at 14 million uh, Marvel land. We talked about Todd Phillips, Joker movies, officially rated R. What else did we talk about? A-, a bunch of stuff and I've already forgotten. Batman. We Batman. talked about the Batman and like all the villains that are going to be in there. Talked a little bit there. about the Avengers game as well. Again, kind of thing. Oh, well, we kind of brought that. Oh, the game. Yes, the Avengers game. game. That's what we started with. Right. 
Yeah. Um, well, and speaking of Avengers, the meme that's going around right now is the one where he's talking to Rocket and he's like, yeah, but he's the toughest around. He's like, well, he haven't, hasn't fought me. He hasn't he's fought like, me twice. <laughs> he hasn't fought me twice. Yeah. Because Avengers <laughs> is going out again and yeah. re-releasing, which is super fucking confusing because last I checked, it's still in theaters. It, it's re-releasing with more content and post-credit yeah, but, scenes. But it's not content in the movie. It's just post credit uh, is it post credit stuff, stuff like only a special tribute but apparently stuff. it's supposed to be three out a little bit extra so right now where is it at where was that three minutes and three minutes was that or sorry three hours <laughs> three, three hours three hours something but three the, hours exactly but the, now the, it's the, three eight yeah but the statement was all the stuff it's all after the credits um, so it's essentially like bonus features on a dvd or a blu-ray yeah, okay. that are going to be after there's two with it ways. I know um, Anthony's first reaction was it's scuzzy or scummy or yeah, what did he, he said say? scummy kind of thing. But it's like everyone else is re-released, like Avatar. Avatar re-released. Now Avatar was number one. However, Avatar was the only movie to hit number one that quickly. I think it was like eleven yeah. weeks or something like that. Yeah. So Avatar already beat Titanic, which was the previous movie. <laughs> then they did a re-release, and then they got an extra thirty-three million. So they boosted their number, but they re-released that I think around Christmas time. Mm-hmm. Um, Deadpool pretty much put out the exact same movie, but with the with the uh, <clears throat> um, what's that bride's movie? Fuck. The Princess Bride. The Princess Bride style, yeah. Christmas story style thing. Again, exact same movie. Yeah, but they just re released it and th- made more money. PG thirteen version. Yeah, but it's still like people were commenting here when we were doing it. They're like, yeah, it's pretty much the same movie. So. It, it, Avatar was only that much off last time they when they re released. They think? weren't off. They were no, no, they I'm were just number one. We're talking about like money wise because right right now, uh, Marvel's sitting at shy of forty mil roughly. Yeah, I think uh, last I checked was forty five. Forty five mil to beat. to beat it. Yeah, and then Avatar made an extra thirty three million off their mm. re release. I and I don't remember why Avatar re released it, and so IMAX again. It could be an IMAX thing. I and it, would, it wouldn't be a bad idea because... Avengers it, should release an IMAX now, yeah, man. but we'll see what happens. I don't know. I might, I'm might. i intrigued. I'll probably go see it again. My brother-in-law <laughs> hasn't seen it yet, so I think he, I really want him to see it in theaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's worth it. it. Yeah, I think it'd be... For him, he would love to see it because we did a whole run every time they'd come yeah. over. We'd make supper and he'd watch an MCU movie leading up to it because he saw Infinity War. So it still hasn't left theaters technically. That's why I'm so fucking confused. Like, you're not re-releasing shit. You're just keep putting it out. And <laughs> also... It's kind of interesting that Disney would let them do that just before Toy Story 4, just before Spider-Man Homecoming, or sorry, Spider-Man Far From Home. Yeah. Um, they're they're kind of competing against each other at this point, but they kind of own everything, so really they're not doesn't worried. matter. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, they don't mind. Toy Story will grab a whole other audience at the end of the day. Lion so. King will be huge, though. That's coming out on the 18th. Of July. Of July. July 2nd is far from home so the week before is when yeah. avengers is re-releasing which is literally like next week yeah it's or true. this weekend but again last i hey it's anthony uh last i checked mm-hmm. it was still in theaters that's why yeah. i'm really just I'm, I'm i'm slightly confused but if they beat avatar fuck it i i want them to well <laughs> this leads to a bigger thing yeah and i was listening to someone talk about this and i 100 i think it was roth at fandom <laughs> entertainment mm-hmm. which is part of screen junkies she was saying like this is probably like the last or no it was either roth or somebody else anyways they were talking about how this is probably the last time mm-hmm. box office uh, box office movies will be competing mm-hmm. and the reason is is because people aren't going to movies anymore I the know, way we're yeah. consuming content is changing it's more in our homes. Fuck, they're going to get to a point the one guy mentioned as a joke, but this could happen where literally you'll like blink and you'll see five movies. It'll just happen. And then you'll go on about your day or whatever. Wow. So because less people are going to th- uh, going to experience the theaters yeah. as there were, like this yeah. is just fact, right? You can see those numbers dwindling. Avengers Endgame did something unprecedented by creating a, a universe over 10 years and blah, blah, blah. What else in the world could possibly bring people to go see that? Like the only other thing that I can think of that would increase the box office numbers if it's, if it is if NASA was going to inhabit Mars and they had a live feed in the theaters for the world to see them land on Mars and call, like colonize it. Yeah. Because that would be the fucking craziest thing in the world. Or like, oh, we just discovered aliens. You have to go to the theater to see it because we're going to live stream it at the theater. And it's like aliens, humans and aliens mixing together. Mm-hmm. That's is the only thing I can think of right now mm-hmm. that could get people to the theater that would actually compete at this point. 
Yeah. Star Wars is done after um, like the the Force Awakens brought a shit ton of people. Yeah, because after, it's Star Wars. Yep. Yeah. Endgame did what Endgame did, mm-hmm. and so it's competing against Avatar. I don't. I honestly don't think. I, sorry, I honestly believe that this is it. Whoever takes the top spot between Avatar and Endgame, that is it for eternity. Mm-hmm. I do not see anything that will ever do, will ever beat it. Get that close. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't even think it'll be. Uh, I think it'll be a historic database that we once had because the way that we're consuming content. Movies, yeah. streaming, all that stuff, our TV and all that is just changing the game for it. Yeah. The theaters will suffer and they'll suck. They'll like 50 years down the road. I would, mm-hmm. I would even argue 30 years down the road. Yeah. It's going to be like, oh, what are those? Oh, we used to go there and sit together in groups and mm-hmm. watch it like the drive in. Yeah. You tell a kid, hey, we're going to a drive in. What the fuck's a drive in? We don't have any anymore anyways. Yeah. Here. Yeah, exactly. But here, here's the thing with the theater situation. People still like there's. The, Maybe not as many, but there's still, I think, a good amount of people that enjoy that experience, especially during our winter months, which sure. end up being very long. People want an excuse to get out of the house and, you know, you can only go out to like a, a regular restaurant or a pub or bar or whatever regularly. So you you top it off and do a movie here and there. So agreed. It's, I, it's just it's very trickle down. I agree with you on that. It won't die for a while. A very long time. But I mean, I think just the fact that you've got competing movies for this top spot. Mm-hmm. I, I truly believe whoever takes it now, it's there for life. Yeah. Unless Avengers decides to re-release it again in Christmas just to stick it in Avatar, which I, I think would. would just be hilarious. That would be awesome. But I don't think it's a scummy move, as Anthony said, because, again, movies do that all the time. If Avatar did it to get to that spot, let's say they they just stuck with their original release and nothing else. But I think, yeah, I think the difference would really be like um, a mill. Two yeah. mils, three mil, whatever it is, because it won't be that much of a disparity. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just, it's business. Yeah, we got to make top spot. What does Arturo say? All he said is, I feel like Spider Man will have people want to research Endgame. Spider Man will want to research Endgame. I think like Far From Home will make oh, people want to yeah. look more into Endgame and see what comes out of it and stuff like that. So for sure, and it'll make bank one hundred percent. I, I agree with that one hundred percent. Also speaking of Spider-Man, randomly, mm-hmm. Kevin Feige has stated that a Spider-Man and Venom crossover would happen, mm-hmm. but it's up to Sony. Yeah. I don't doubt it's going to happen. I see it happening. Sony would be dumb not to team up again. They made money. The thing is- They made money on a character they're, they're going to hold on, on. They're going to hold on to Spider-Man just to have that control on it For sure. and make the money on it. Yep. And at the end of the day, Feige will be like, yeah, we want it, but if you're willing to play ball and let us have the- have the ball, like, do it how we want, and yep. you guys don't interfere as much, but you'll get some credit too. It'll work. It'll be a happy coexistence until until uh, Disney decides to buy Sony out. <laughs> no, well, no fucking shit, man. That's going to happen. <laughs> Finish off like, the gauntlet. We're, we're all sitting here being like, yeah, Marvel, Marvel's awesome. We're going to dump all our money to them, and next thing we're going to know, tomorrow they're going to be, like, taking over our lives along with Google and Facebook and, and everything yep. else. They're gonna and we we just contributed to the monopoly and they're just gonna be eating up and taking over yeah. every single fucking thing. Almost that's a there. down. That's the bad thing about uh, when people talk. That's what people think about when they think of capitalism. Yeah, they don't think about you know I'm starting a business, I'm growing it, free market stuff like that. They yeah. just think they look at the shitty things, which it's true they exist of these monopolies and this greed and just we're gonna eat the fucking shit up like. The whole movie industry is going. It's what Netflix. Yeah. Um, the one guy, the one podcast I was listening to, he's like, you know, what started as a Craigslist ad for renting out your property yeah. now turned into Airbnb. Okay, and that's like you know all these little things that like Uber. But the thing is, we we can't even blame them. It's us. We the consumer. We sure. we we completely fueled it. So to say like. They started out with something very small, but in the end of the day, it takes its a form of its own because of the way the consumer uses it, manipulates it. Sure. Look at look at Tinder. Started oh out as like a legitimate dating site, so people could actually meet people. And now it's all just it's all about hookups. It's all it took a mind of its own, and there's really no business to be on there if you're not really yeah for the real thing. So that yeah. took a mind of its own. Netflix became what it became, and like the DVD rentals done blockbusters are gone because of netflix sure and they started and with the rentals exactly yeah I remember so that. they had their little kiosks and stuff like that and then they evolved it as the technology evolved now everyone's on it mm-hmm. you got crave 
Netflix, Air, uh, Amazon, Hulu. Hulu, Disney Plus is coming out in the well, fall. And Disney bought a lot of this shit anyways when they had the Fox merger. Yeah. Like they, they own a controlling Which, share in a lot of these. To me, I like that it's consol- it'll be consolidated all to one. If I can get Disney Plus and everything's there, why not? Well, and and what you just said, literally, you are one of the prototypes of the people. That 100%, are like, yeah. People want everything in one shot, and you just said but it. But they've, like, made, yeah, they they've made us that way because now we're pissed off that I have to have Netflix for certain shows. I have yeah. to have Crave for the other. I have to yeah. have Hulu for the other. And yeah, it drives some people to download, <laughs> you know? Don't download. No, don't download. Don't download. Anyways. Want the cops after you. Yeah. Either way, I think a Venom and Spidey crossover would be great. And oh, it's, again, they'd be stupid if they didn't do I it. I think it's going to happen after the Venom Carnage. Oh, yeah. I think Venom Carnage needs to happen first because they've already Agreed. hinted it. And Venom was such a big hit on its own. Mm. You didn't need Spider-Man in there. It's you funny. Ven- for, for such a mediocre movie, it was such a big hit. I thought it was great, and they found a great actor to portray him, right? So sure, yeah. I think it worked out great. What's the chat saying? Uh, Blake came back. He pieced out for a little to oh, watch the on, NBA man. picks and stuff like that. Oh. So, yeah. Did Kawhi go anywhere? Did the Lakers get him as a free agent? What's the yeah. deal? Um, did Arturo say anything? Uh, no, he said like rematch. Rematch. Then. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, 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 um. I think I screenshot something else. Mm-hmm. I screenshot a bunch of stuff this week because a lot of this stuff I write down and then I forget because I yeah. find it on the fly. Um, okay, let's get into Keanu Reeves now that we're talking about yeah. Marvel. Marvel. Why is it fuzzed out? You were fuzzed out for a second. This is a quote from Kevin Feige. We talk to him for almost every film we make. We talk to Keanu Reeves about. It's, I don't, I, that's a weird sentence. I don't know when, if, or ever he'll join the MCU but we very much want to figure out the right way to do it. That is Kevin Feige mm-hmm. talking about Keanu Reeves, who is the hottest thing right now mm-hmm. in terms of just the internet loves him, yep. the people love him, we love him, Yep, great dude, not the most amount of range as an actor, nope. but he's just a good down-to-earth dude that's mm-hmm. being real careful and he's playing his hands beautifully oh yeah i think so me personally Mm -hmm. i don't need to see keanu reeves in the mcu no and uh the only reason is is because mcu is evolving now to something other than a a, a self-contained story yeah i think it'd be very hard to continue and and relive the magic don't even try to relive the magic they're going to go off into the, the, the Eternals, which is another thing of Thanos' thing, which one of the characters that I saw was called Druig, yeah. D-R-U-I-G. That's the one. That's the one, yeah. Um, looks all right. Yeah. Um, there's lots of facets uh, I would, uh, you know, that he could do. Mm-hmm. But I don't think we need him there no. because when you reach a certain status, yeah, it's really hard to, you want your, your actors to, to embody a character. Mm-hmm. Keanu Reeves embodies John Wick. Me personally, if I see him in an MCU movie, I'm seeing John Wick in an MCU movie. Basically. And and it's because of this. He, everyone for the longest time has always made fun of his acting. He had a stale, like he had a stale career for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, he even said it himself. And then John Wick brought him back. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm back. So because of that, I know I've seen almost all of his movies. I really like Devil's Advocate. He was he was really good in that. Yep. Um, but anyways, when I think about him in the MCU, the, the only thing I can think of is Moon Knight. If they were going to put him in as anybody, it would be Moon Knight. Um, I There's a couple of lists out there that I, I agree with. Like uh, even Doom, he would, as a villain, would be interesting to put him in, not just as a hero. Put him in as one of the villains that could be reoccurring and that kind of stuff, not a one-off kind of thing. Um, but I, I am leaning towards if he's going to play a hero role, just for the sake of discussion and argument, mm-hmm. uh, he def- I'd definitely lean towards uh, a celestial kind of thing. So like Adam Warlock was thrown out there. I, he doesn't fit the nope. look of Adam Warlock. Not even close. I, Actually, like, I didn't mind the Zac Efron pick. Zach Efron was another one, but actually we were talking about it at work today because I was like, I was picking their brain too because I was like, ah, I wonder who the heck he could play. And one, like the guy, uh, KJ App, 
Apka. He plays uh, Archie in the Riverdale. He could play Adam Warlock. But back to Keanu. Keanu would be like, uh, he could have actually played the original Captain Marvel, Mm -hmm. Marvel or whatever. Mm, he could okay. have done that. Uh, any of the, you know, the Druig is one of the uh, cele- like um, Eternals. Eternals. He could also play Icarus. Icarus. Okay. And uh, what's that? Nova is another one he could play. I think he'd do pretty well. Nova is like Nova's a kid though. There's another Nova that's an adult. See, and, and but that's the thing though. You'd have to really stretch out the MCU For sure. to make it happen. I think he'd be a better voice. Like, like Silver Surfer. I know they mentioned Silver Surfer. Yeah. I don't see that. I, the thing mm-hmm. with Keanu Reeves' voice is he has a sort of... Okay, who is Keanu Reeves as a person? He can establish rage. Yeah. But it's self-contained rage. Mm-hmm. When he gets too crazy, like even John Wick, the first one, he's like, I'm thinking I'm back. Like yeah. That was probably the extent before it gets comical. Yeah. This is, to, this is just me thinking. You yeah. guys could think I'm fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. He has an earnestness to him. Mm-hmm. He has a vulnerability to him. He ha- he is a like everything that John Wick is. Yeah, is like is what Keanu. It, it, to me, I mm-hmm. can see Keanu as even as uh, in the Matrix, mm-hmm. stoic. He had that earnestness. He was that. He was just like straight face kind of dude or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Like in in even in the John Wick movies, when you l- listen to his dialogue, his lines are relatively cheesy, but he delivers them well. Mm-hmm. So I think for a voice part, it'd be really interesting. But the cadence of the vo- of his voice, of the way he talks, because I've seen those mm-hmm. behind the th- scene things of Toy Story. Yeah. Like, again, like he, it's Keanu Reeves doing Keanu Reeves kind of thing. Yeah. Moon Knight, on the other hand, is a character that I see them doing because uh, he is like a Defender style Batman, like a city. That's they say like Batman. the Batman of the MCU in a way. Yeah. And I think he'd be really good because you wouldn't have to see his face. Mm-hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with his face, but like. You wouldn't see Keanu Reeves. You would just, he would be able to add in that fucking hard work. Like mm-hmm. all the hard work that he does, he can add it in there. Yeah. And be super physical on screen. Yep. Right. But at the same time, it'd be, I, I don't know. It, it's it's really interesting because yeah. Keanu Reeves is such an interesting actor yeah. and he's just been able to find himself in just the right spots right now. Yep. But I think stretching Keanu out too far yeah. is is maybe not the best call. Yeah. And I and I, I don't know if I don't know if the MCU is the right spot for him. Probably not, but uh based on like what Kim and Feige he really wants, I think if he was to do it at all for a very I wouldn't say not quick turnaround, but the most the most the movie coming up next that's been announced and it's a go ahead mm-hmm. and sorry casting, I think the Eternals would be the best fit for him. It's got a darker feel to it. It's I and think, I what think it that is, fits it's like Thanos is like step like not basically, it's or like, but like the Eternals are above. Soldiers. No, uh, the Eternals are above Thanos. Oh, they are. Yes, they're the Celestials and all that stuff like See, that. I don't so, know shit about the Eternals. So I just saw it. On I just read post. up on it a little bit, but Druig was one that his name got brought up, and then Icarus. someone said Namor, the submariner. So Namor is basically like the MCU Aquaman. Yeah. So he could do that as well. I guess you could say if he's one of the uh, um, Eternals kind of things. So. Which people were saying that Akoya was hinting at when she was saying like, "There's a thing. There's an earthquake in the water or something." Yeah, it could just be an earthquake. And they're like, oh, it's yeah. Namor. So no, exciting. definitely. So exciting. Anyways, I, I don't know. I Anthony said Wolverine. Don't see it. Well, see, Wolverine, like, I guess he's got the facial hair a little bit, but uh, from... He's got the... Again, he's got... The thing is, the got a bit original of a Wolverine we know, and again, it was something we discussed that worked today and got brought. I'm like, Wolverine technically is like a really short guy who's like a little bit Napoleonic, and he's got... And this he's like 5'3". My boss is the one who kind of said that, like, this is the this is the Wolverine we saw. Hugh Jackman technically wasn't the right build for Wolverine, but he did a good job being, He embodied him. He embodied the Wolverine and yeah. Wolverine in character. Um, but if you wanted to go back to the original cartoons, yeah, I kind of remember him being like a snap case, like a yeah, short guy built that kind of thing so wolverine yeah, yeah man he was a psycho so therefore they have he's a feral really, animal they technically haven't hit the mark with his guy i think everyone kind of forgot about that because how well hugh jackman did with him well they were shitting he, all over him when it first came out the original because they're like oh that's not wolverine doesn't look like it. i was really young when it came out so i really liked it regardless. arturo says cyclops that uh that would be interesting i know that was something that was also suggested yeah Oh, yeah, I guess with them bringing in the X-Men and recasting everything, I guess yeah, that opens up doors. But, I, I mean, that's going to be a long ways away. Because mm-hmm. um, Dark Phoenix has had 
mixed reviews. We'll put it that way. Again, I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. My guess is it's not as... I'm guessing it's not going to be the dumpster fire that people are saying that it is. I'm thinking yeah. it's going to be more the lines of apocalypse where it just happened and I don't care. Yeah, I know I might end up liking it. <laughs> you'll, you'll probably like it. You like everything. <laughs> What's a movie you fucking hate? Like, are there movies I that you actually hate, do not like? Um, I think there was a Max Payne. <laughs> oh, the Mark with, Wahlberg one. <laughs> yes, I absolutely hated that one. Uh, it wasn't good. Miami Vice was absolutely terrible. That's so boring. I hate Jerry Maguire. Oh, I don't like Jerry Maguire. I don't know what it is about it. That's funny. Yeah, but most I think of it's the, good. I just don't think it's yeah. as good as people think it is. I think it's good. And see, even like the Avatar, the Last Airbender, I hated it overall, but I still enjoyed the content. Wait, the movie or the cartoon? The movie. The cartoon's amazing. Yeah, the movie was terrible. But I it's awful. That's that's when I want to see them redo. Is that uh, Last Airbender? I think they should just leave it with just no. That I think M, M. Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan just, disaster dumpster fire. I think just, they can do it proper if the right person comes along and makes. I think it a you need somebody more. with imagination. That's what you need. Yeah, and a darker dialogue for sure. But it the the original cartoon wasn't dark. No, but it, it, it was it had dark dark themes to it. Like we're talking it, the the dialogue in the movie that M Night Shyamalan version was ho- absolutely horrible. Yeah, it was it was borderline pr- Star Wars prequels dialogue. Yep. But M Night Shyamalan doesn't have good dialogue to begin with ever. No. Um, what else do I have? What else do I have? Are what you, else oh, do I have? Are you gonna get into the MTV thing? I really yeah, MTV I'm... is fucking stupid. I don't know if there's a technical thing to it because Anthony did bring up. A, okay, this, this is what we're gonna talk about. Go for it. MTV awards have come out. I didn't even. I thought they had d- finished MTV awards eons ago. Like no one. I don't think anybody cares that much anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I took a snapshot of some of the. What's wrong? Are you looking no, at the checking. Thing? Uh, I took a look at some of the stuff. Best movie was uh, Avengers Endgame. It won. Perfect. Against Us, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Black Klansman, and To All the Boys I've Loved. Mm -hmm. Best Hero, Robert Downey Jr., over Zachary Levi, Brie Larson, Maisie Williams, John David Washington. I guess Game of Thrones won Best TV Show, even though it was like the worst I think it was like a, a lot of people are calling it an achievement award over like the entire show, but it's like yeah, the season as, was as awful. A, true, the season was not great, uh, but the entire series was great up until a certain point. But as an award thing, do you give the lifetime, or do you like? I don't know if you can. Give, you should give the lifetime. At, at the end of the day, the MTV Movie Awards are completely inconsequential. Up, they're just kind of whatever. They're they're like almost like the Teen Choice thing. Oh um, yeah, of adult. Pretty, pretty damn close. Because there's no like, there's no really panel of any kind. It's just everyone gets a chance to vote. Mm-hmm. So uh, Josh Brolin won for Endgame, which I actually disagree with. As a villain, yeah, I would have given it to Lupita Nyong'o because I thought I loved her in Us. The only but, reason is is because Infinity War was Thanos' movie, and that's the movie he wins for. That's yeah, a great. So. That's the great villain because that was a villain story. Yeah. Um, and among other things, now <laughs> you all know my feelings. I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't know why. I don't know the technical qualifications. But if it was able to be nominated, I believe it qualified to win. How in the fuck did Captain Marvel win Best Fight? Over Avengers Endgame, which nominates Chris Evans and Josh Brolin's fight. Anthony, because for some reason he loves Captain Marvel. Oh, pause due to poor connection. Okay. Anybody in the live? Sorry. And we're pretty much done anyways. Um, Oh, zero remaining. (laughs) Yeah, we didn't even bother to take a look. Awkward. Anyways, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't understand how... um, Do I just press the share button? Sure. Um, I don't understand why, how, in what world does Captain Marvel with her terribly choreographed fight scenes, except for the train, and I don't know if that was the train scene that they had mentioned, but even that, that does not win over Chris Evans, like Captain America with a half-broken shield, Wielding wielding Mjolnir. Beating the shit out of Thanos, calling the fucking lightning. I am sorry, no thanks. You that was not, bad. you are undeserving. It was not even. There wasn't even a good fight in the movie that I can look at and be like, this was good. Except 
in my opinion, you liked the first the first where one your hands were where bound. Our hands were bound. I thought that was a really great scene. Yeah. I actually it actually got me excited for the movie because I'm like, oh shit, like this is this is great. This is like this is kind of playing around with that idea of of feeling bound and having to break through it. And she's yeah. she's already gotten to that point where she can break through it. And you know, a, a physical representation of what she's been going through all her life. Blah blah blah. Yeah, instead yeah. of really just driving it like a needle in your fucking head. Yeah. That was the only one, but I don't think that's the one they're referencing. But I do not believe that there's anything close here that would even be no. up to the Chris Evans and Josh Brolin fight. And it's not even just because it was earned fight, not mm-hmm. the more Captain Marvel one, the, the, the Chris Evans one, Captain yeah. America one was an earned fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to say, oh, well, you know, it's been building up and that's why it's so big. It's just fucking awesome. Uh, the, the, if, you, if Endgame came out on, on its own... It would still be. It would the, still be amazing. <laughs> yeah, if there was nothing behind it, and you're just like, "Holy shit!" There's a dude holding a fucking shield and a hammer that calls lightning, fighting a purple dude in an yeah. army suit with a with like a blade that's the size of his body or bigger. Yep, that's the fucking battle you pick. Yep. Oh man, it's terrible. I don't. I get have it. no idea where that comes from and why they went that route. I just. That's ridiculous. It's a terrible opinion. choice. It's a fucking terrible choice. Yeah. Even Maisie Williams' fight was 10 times better. Which one? Because I, I was okay. Confused here, 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 let's just say were. for argument's sake that her bad, her fight in the battle, the long night. Yes. Her foot just fighting in general. Oh, yeah. If you were her, to compile all of them. If you were yeah, to compile man. that entire episode on its own of her fighting style. Yeah. Even on that bridge there or not yeah. the bridge, but like that top part of the castle or when she was like her, her running, yeah, her yeah. in the halls, everything. So yeah. if you compiled that, that was better than Captain Marvel. I'm not sure what the rest of them, I can't remember what you had in there. Um, what the, the other rest, ones uh, were. I didn't see these other ones. WWE WrestleMania 35, Ronda that's, Rousey, that's Becky that Lynch, even got and C. Nominated. Flair. See, that's why the MTV ones are kind of goofy and I don't, I wouldn't take them to heart and just... Usually they kind of hit on the popular stuff, but this one was like, what the hell? This one, this one was a, um, uh, this was probably Disney trying their damnedest to continue to protect Captain Marvel as a property. <laughs> Who That's knows? what that is. Um, no RBG, idea. I've never heard of it, but Ruth Bader Ginsburg. No idea. Uh, that was another fight that was nominated. Anyways, yeah, I saw that. I was like, what the fuck? Like, mm. what a, what a terrible, terrible choice. Yeah. Like no, she didn't. Even the last fight didn't deserve anything. It was just this. It wasn't even a, a properly choreographed fight. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't even a fun, enjoyable fight to look at. No. Again, the only one for me is that opening one, and that wasn't even really a fight scene. It was more her running away while breaking these chains. Uh, she she fought in it, so it's no, it's, no, it's, she it's, fought, but it's I'm not saying, a fighting sequence per se. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. more of a montage, mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Goofy. Just just stupidity around. Yeah. Every single time I try to forget this shit, it just keeps <laughs> creeping in and then creep, something creep. stupid comes up. I've been trying, man. Positive. I've been Positive I've been trying to <laughs> I've been trying to steer away. Um I've been trying to steer away. Yeah. I've been trying to like just get it because the one guy was saying he's like, You want to be happy? Stay away from the politics. But I'm one of those guys that like if I see something that's just stupid, it yeah. just drives me up the fucking wall. Like that's if I was have, if I have to work on something. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing I need to do. I need to just look at a bunch of shit that pisses me off and just work on not getting yeah. triggered because I get triggered yeah. real fast. See, I never, I never get uh, that intense about it, but I get annoyed, which is why I'm able to enjoy more movies than you, and I do mm-hmm. like a lot more stuff. And I'm easygoing that way. But um, you're just an easygoing person in general. Yeah, but on top of it, like the politics behind. Uh, what they did with Captain Marvel and all that stuff. It Unsubstantiated, does. by the way. Yeah. There's still rumors. I'm just looking at patterns here. Oh, okay. I remember saying it in my rant because oh, I remember okay. going back and re-listening so to it. So it's still uh, it just out looked, to the market. Yeah, like oh, okay. all the stuff that was coming out, everything that I was I was reading from all different publications. Mm-hmm. Um, again, even the fact there was one article that, and I've mentioned his name before, Tim Poole from Tim Cast. Yeah, He's a great journalist. He's one of those guys that like he's neither left or right. He just looks at the facts, breaks them down. Yeah. That's it, right? Yeah. Uh, even he was reading an article that a feminist wrote. Yeah. Right? And and again, when I see that movie and I'm going on record, if Captain Marvel came out in phase one, don't give a shit. Yeah. Or phase two, sorry, still wouldn't give a shit. Mm-hmm. It'd be it, like not sorry. Or the but, start of phase three. So sorry. <laughs> uh if it came out and if she came, if the movie came out in phase two, it wouldn't affect me as much because there's so many things that they try that they showed in that. 
Yeah. Even though a lot of it would bug me, but it wouldn't bug me as much because it's like you're literally trying to rewrite the history of the MCU that you've brought forward mm-hmm. through this character for no reason other than to propagate whatever you're wanting to propagate. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. that's enough of that. Not that's fair. enough of that. We got anything else? Um, Actually, there's one new piece. There's something new that's coming about. Tell a, me. A new TV series called uh, The Wheel of Time. The Wheel of Time. Tell me about it's The Wheel of Time. It's a book series. Um, Holy crap. Let me... Actually, now that you mentioned TV, I have one more thing. Cool. Yeah. The Wheel of Time, hey? Yeah, so it's a, it's a fantasy mm-hmm. novel, like series, and there's probably started in 1990. Oh, shit. And up until 2013. So It's been going since? How it, many books? I think there's 11. Holy 12. fuck. Wheel of Time. Let me see this. I'm getting to the... Uh, getting to the meat of it. But it's... We're talking a lot of content here. 14 books. Damn. And the last one came out was 2013. So they're starting this TV series. And the only reason I found out about it was because they did a casting announcement of Roseman Pike. Love her. So she's great. I don't know what... I, I have known nothing about this character, but a mutual friend of ours, Louis, he loves the series. One of his favorite book series. He's read ever. them all? He's read them all. He oh. has them all. And for whatever reason, I'm like, Wheel of Time, I've heard that damn uh, name before. And who is it? The Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson are the ones who have done all these, I believe. Yes. Robert Jordan, Brandon Sanderson... And like, there's 14 books here of f- content. And honestly, to me, if they have that much content, and with what Game of Thrones has been able to do, mm-hmm. this could actually drive it to be potentially better. Better than Game of Thrones. It, it has the potential for it. The content behind it, the lore behind it, could be enough to drive it forward. What's it about? I really don't know. Oh, <laughs> but just the fact that it falls under. Um, just the fact that it falls under the fantasy realm and stuff, and we just got off the hype of Game of Thrones. Yes, it didn't have, didn't stick the landing as we all wanted by mm-hmm. any means. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they started something great with the with the whole everybody fantasy, getting into fantasy, fantasy realm and stuff like that. Everyone can get into it as long as it you know has a compelling story. So with the content that they have, with fourteen books. You can imagine what kind and of it's story. Finished. They're all done. That's a good. Point. I don't know if the series is done, but you're with 14 books out. I think you'll be very far behind if these guys decide to keep going. Well, as at least it's that, also it's also been six years since a book release, so I imagine yeah. they're done that well, entire series I right now. Would, I think it would be smart for whoever decides to take yeah. it on or whoever is taking it on mm-hmm. to be like not do the Game of Thrones thing where they're waiting yeah. for George R. R. Martin to finish a fucking book. Well, and that's just it, right? And maybe they should have waited for him to finish the book. I agree. They should if they waited two years. You know what? Just wait longer. People will fucking wait for it. Oh yeah, let him finish the book. It, it was it was difficult. And he needs to get a li- like a fire lit under his ass. You know what? The more I've well, read about George R. R. Martin, yeah. the more I find he's a bit of a baby. Probably, I could see that. Like the shit he was saying about like J. R. R. Tolkien. He was just like bitching about like his oh, like man. her book got it over his, and I was just like, uh, J. K. Rowling. You mean J. K. Rowling? Sorry. Yeah. I'm like you're a little bit of a, a bit of a, a little uh, yeah. And like for how long it took you to get your these move this move even done or the the book published, you think you would have had it all done for the most part? Because, yeah. but he's very far behind. But can't be easy. He has for promised. Sure. He has promised, from what I understand. Like this is the one time he's actually guaranteed that book six will be complete by 2020. Great. So. And that'll that'll push given. forward for a lot of people, and that's basically season six. Yeah, book six, season six. I don't know how the other two will go. If he has more books than seasons out right now of mm-hmm. of Game of Thrones, whatever. But this Wheel of Time thing, I think it has great potential. And yep. again, it helped that Game of Thrones paved the way on this major fantasy TV guide. I don't think anything else is really. I mean, we've all had the historical with Spartacus. We had. I don't think anything else has reached this level. Well, would you Breaking say Breaking Bad, fantasy? Oh, you're talking. Straight I'm, ta- I'm talking about that, that genre. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, this is because it speaks to a different things. crowd altogether initially. Not and anymore. Then, the whole world. No, and that's what I'm it. saying. Yeah. Not anymore because of Game of Thrones. It's opened up that world to a lot of people that be like, oh, you know, okay, magic dragons. It could be just as good. Yeah, it's a really tough pick too because you yeah. don't expect it to be for the masses. Yeah. So hmm. that's the only new new thing I I know. Did you see the trailer for the boys? 
Yes, oh, I just so, good. so I watched the trailer. Have you? There's another tra- the Good Boys. I haven't seen the Good Boys. That's the one uh, Seth Rogen is uh, with like three young kids. Oh no, I don't care. No, not that one. I'm talking about. The I think Carl it looks no, but one. I know what you're talking about. But it's just funny because I watched the Red Band trailer for the Good Boys, which just looks hilarious because it's like it's it's a it's a shut off your mind kind of comedy. Seth MacFarlane, like Seth Fa- Rogen, Seth Rogen. So Pineapple Express crew, right, right. So mm-hmm. like they're doing that, and then. The boys looks amazing, dude. Hilarious. Looks, and what's funny is now because of Brightburn, you're gonna start seeing these like anti superhero movies. Yes, yes. Which yeah. I think it's super funny that they're going this route. Mm-hmm. Like you've got the what's that? They're called the Seven. Is the superheroes in this one? And it was so funny where like just oh, that yeah, opening yeah. thing where the guy flies in and takes out the dude's girlfriend while he's still. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Carl Urban was is great for this role. I was like Carl. Honestly, Urban. we were talking about Carl Urban. It probably has to be the most versatile actor ever he's, he's been in so many he's things. done star trek as mccoy yep he's Elmir in lord of the rings yep uh what the heck else has he done he was like in thor he was in thor yeah let's, let's, that's let's right let's look him up let's look him up because we're not gonna we're not gonna go off our memory on this no, one definitely carl not. urban the carl, guy's like has urban. amazing range he doesn't like and this is probably one of his few times that he's actually held the front line. Like he's the main Dread, character. Almost. Doom, Red. Oh yeah, the- Judge Dread. I heard the remake. He did amazing in. Uh yeah, a lot of people like that one. Uh, Born Supremacy. He was in. Oh, Riddick. that's right. Supremacy. He was in. A Riddick was other great. Ones. Did you watch Riddick at all? No. Those he are was in the Loft. Good. I saw the Loft. It was okay. It's not that nope. great. It's more of a direction thing than anything. Yeah. Again, Star Trek. Star Trek. Um, well. He's been in a lot of things. Maybe the most versatile actor is not the case, but he's just been in a lot. Well, like he goes from like he does the fantasy thing. He did the the science thing. He's now doing the superhero thing. Yeah, but um, I mean, I think the loft and this movie is the, like the first two that but I he'll noticed pop where up. he's like a lead. Yeah, he'll pop up and here dread. and there. Yeah, exactly. He'll, but yes, he pops up here and there and he's always on good. big hits. And we're like, man, this guy's been everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I completely forgot he was in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, there you go. Because I'm like, fuck, I know that guy from somewhere when I was watching Ragnarok. Yeah. And it was like, oh, my God. Just like dude. I think earlier in the, I think the early 2000s, you know, the actor who played Agamemnon? Oh, yeah. He was Brian almost, Cox. Brian Cox was almost in everything. He's awesome. He was in the Bourne movies, too. I, yeah. I was, was like. The, I think he was in the second one, too. Yeah. He so, is, he's fantastic. Yeah. He's so good. He was in but, X-Men, too. Uh, yeah. No, the boys looks hilarious. <laughs> Sweet. What else All we got? Right. Uh, I don't know. That's I think it? that's pretty much it. I don't think I sent anything else to you guys or screenshot anything. Yeah, I don't think so either. That's usually how I can keep track. I'm like, okay, I'll screenshot this and, and then go back in the chat. Yep, dude, use your Samsung notes. That's what I have everything on. That's cute. Just, dude, I do, I do just it just not for all this stuff. the time. <laughs> Samsung notes is the way to go. Yeah. I wonder if no, they're going to come old, up with good a old screenshot and then it fills up my phone and I don't have anything else. <laughs> yeah. What do I have? Empty me awards are a joke. Uh, this has been a very kind of straightforward episode. Nothing too uh, crazy. Which yeah. makes it a lot harder for me to come up with a title for it. Yeah, no, nothing else pretty crazy. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. All right, that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm working on getting us a new logo. Okay. How's and I'm also working on getting us um, a website through Squarespace. Because I've heard a lot of the po- other podcasts that I listen to. They've mentioned Squarespace as a website. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't it's like eight bucks a month or something like that. Yeah. You can try free trials, everything. So I'm going to work on a website just to, just to have one. Best of luck. Why not? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, and then I have a T-shirt idea, but I want to see if it's going to work and if it's going to it's gonna be something. Because through Squarespace, you can have integrated um, online store in there. So well, that'll really be perfect cool. for, for that kind of stuff. Yep. Also, for all of you Saskatchewan people, the Saskatchewan Podcast Network Seems to be still in the go or on the go. Still work, still, still happening. Um, I talked to the one gentleman from the Sask, the 306 podcast, uh, and he asked for my email. So that means it's something still happening. So it's going to be a, again, a network very much like other provinces have where I'll you know, consolidate the Saskatchewan podcasts that are out there. There's a lot of really cool people doing a lot of really, really cool things. And uh, we're kind of not really just Saskatchewan based. We just mentioned a few places of where we're at. Uh, but for the most, it'll just be really cool to be a part of that little community. So, yeah, yep. still look out for that. I believe July 1st is still the day it's going to happen. It's not going to change anything with the show. You just might be able to find it 
Easier. on another place um, if you're looking for it and everything and hopefully find other people there as well. That is it for this week, right? Right. 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 And wherever you're listening from, whether it's Anchor, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Podbean, Radio Public, or YouTube, thank you so much for listening to us for another week. We appreciate it. You are lovely. I hope you're having a great, great day. As I mentioned earlier, if you're able to like or comment on any of the publications that you are listening to, go ahead and do it. If you don't feel like it, it's all good. On YouTube, we're at about 923 to 930 or so subscribers. Um, So, yeah, that's climbing, surprisingly. And, uh, yeah, you can always comment there, like there, tell your friends, tell everybody if you want. And until next time, I'm G. And I'm Vess. And we're out.